Somebody knows what's happened to Madeline McCann. And if they do, Tony and Robin know something about what happened to Madeline McCann. They're being very, very quiet about it, aren't they? They are. They are. And that's why, actually, this kind of program is still probably useful. Uh, in the United States, for instance, the story isn't nearly as well known as it is in these islands. It probably is now, though. Would, would it be Hopefully. on the American Netflix Absolutely. platform? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and every week, even after the documentary was aired, the eight part, there's kind of different stories. The public now are honing in over the last few days. Um, on um, one aspect of it, and that was that uh, the children were very sleepy. Uh, somebody, I don't know, these bizarre claims that are made that that maybe the twins and Madeline had been drugged by a predator earlier in the day kind of thing? Tony? It's, it's perhaps not a, a particularly bizarre thought. It was remarkable. Um, the After Madeline had disappeared about 10 o'clock at night um, until 4 o'clock in the morning, there was a vast amount of toing and froing in apartment 5A where the McCann family were, were staying. I mean, a huge amount with dogs coming in, policemen coming in, coming Commotion. out again and coming back again, more policemen, um, talking on radios, no doubt. Um, and through all that, her two young siblings, who were babies, slept, continued sleeping, slept even when they were transferred at four o'clock in the morning to another apartment so the police could get on with, with their investigation. It was remarkable, and Madeline herself had... Her mother had remarked when she put her to bed around eight-ish um, that, that evening that she too had been absolutely exhausted. She'd been exhausted on, on the way home and had been saying things like, P please carry me. Um, and And so one does just have to wonder whether um, that the, they had been somebody had got to them with with a drug before the event earlier in the day it's of course the going back years ago of course people were saying that because uh, you know they were they were a medical profession don't they that they, that they that they were medicating their children to get them to sleep soon sooner so that they could go out you know I mean, there, were, there, there were such allegations there were there, yeah there's, there's nothing that we've been able to detect to it they had some culpo and what parents don't have some culpo around um, we've all been there yes yeah 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 and that's we've all not been there yeah. the, the, the huge criticism and, and, and literally every day we discuss that we get lots of texts and lots of people contributing but by and large while an awful lot of people don't think that they were responsible for the disappearance of their children they do think they were irresponsible for leaving them on their own who, who does that kind of thing Robin uh, I do um, I've done things that now in retrospect perhaps they weren't safe I recall being in one small resort in, on the Majorca island and leaving our little boy and then 18 months sleeping in the bedroom upstairs and going down to the restaurant. Now, in retrospect, our room had access to the street. Anyone could have gone there. I was lucky. The McCanns are, will kick themselves forever for the poor decision they made. They thought they were leaving their children safely to sleeping in an apartment that was 60 yards as the crow flies from where they were sitting. They had instituted a system of checks with their friends so that there were adults from their party circulating past the apartment. They themselves were in the apartment, you know, every half hour or so. And they thought it was safe. And for five nights, it worked. And who hasn't been lulled into that false sense of security we all have on the sunny day you're describing? You know, it's a beautiful place. It's a quiet place. It's a sunny day. And you just sometimes you don't make the right decision as a parent and they didn't and, and one of their doctor friends indeed had said um in her testimony that the mccann's were particularly stern about strict about making sure that every 20 to 30 minutes every 20 to 30 minutes that's not a lot of time well, where's the logic in that like they went to check on the child well where's the logic in that if a predator has been stalking them they know they have a 20 or 30 minute window from the last time being checked it's like a, like a prison warden in a, in a, in a prison. Um, well, you don't think a child, your, your child is being stalked and watched. You know, they, you think your child, the only, you're not worrying about your child being stalked and watched. What are you worried well, about? Choking? They could choke in the 20 or 30 minutes. You, it's fair enough. You can, you can make these criticisms of the parents, and I'm sure they, they make them themselves. I wouldn't sit here and say that they didn't make the wrong call. That's not the issue. 
lots of parents might have made a similar call. Maybe not your listeners, maybe not you, but lots of parents would have made a similar call. Lots of these resorts operate a baby listening service where they send members of staff around to do just this kind of thing. Why didn't they do that, I wonder? Did they you investigate that, that in the sur- book? They didn't yeah. have that service available to them at that hotel. Uh, it was operating at other Mark Warner-run resorts Okay, so that wasn't there because the documentary gave the impression that they refused to engage in the baby service. No, well, what they did refuse to do, and and again, a bad choice in the end, they had an on-site crash, night crash, and the hours were short. They were earlier than the children usually went to bed, and they came home earlier than they would usually have gotten up. They thought it would be disruptive to the children's sleeping patterns. Yes. They thought they were choosing the right thing. Yeah. They did And that's why that sighting of somebody carrying a baby with legs draped, Isn't unconscious, it? stroke, asleep, was just a tourist. Yeah. With well, a child. it may have been just a tourist, or it may not. You don't, oh, okay, so you, you don't accept that it was just a, a daddy bringing his daughter home. You think that's open to question? Scotland Yard came to the conclusion at, at one point, which they made public, that they thought that the man... The, the, the first one should explain to, to, a, to the listeners that there were two sightings um, of a man carrying a, a small child um, in different places, but the one very close to apartment 5A um, w- w- occurred before she was known to be missing and was seen by one of the doctor group, yeah. the McCann's friends, um, as she went to check on her children. Um, and Scotland Yard thought in the end that they had tra- tracked down a, a daddy taking the, the, the little guy home or the little girl home. Uh, we weren't so sure about that. Yeah. I, th- I think it, that remains open and probably we should be open to the idea that that was in fact the abductor my god okay because of okay. the direction in which the man was walking of course i mean you you, you feature all through the eight parts more so than anybody else but like you can only contribute what you believe um you know it, it's not as if everybody in the documentary concurs with everybody else that isn't the case well i think what what we try to contribute is what the evidence says correct and and a lot of people and a lot of your listeners would respond to this emotionally about what they believe or what they feel. And we have not done that. We've parsed the evidence uh, and really tried to come up with what are the facts on the ground. Here's what they believe. They believe that they were very irresponsible for leaving the children. I say that. They also believe that if they weren't all doctors, particularly the McCanns, social services would have taken the twins off them and they'd have no children, that kind of thing. They don't like... Kate McCann, they find her cold, distant. Can I can I ask you to respond to that? And also, when you wrote your bestseller, did you talk with the McCanns? Yeah, yes, yes, we did talk with the McCanns. We wouldn't have started the project without talking to the McCanns. Mm. Everything else aside, and of course, by that time, we had access to the testimonies that they'd given and were able to read repeated statements that they'd made and so on. But nevertheless, we wanted to, as... I, that awful word, investigative journalists. Mm. Um, we wanted to see them for ourselves, and we did go to see them. And um, what did you make of Kate McCann? Well, we good question because most of our day was in fact spent with Kate rather than Jerry. He came at the end. Um, I don't know what does one expect of a woman who's been bereaved, um, if that's the right word, in that way. She seemed to us like that. She seemed like a woman who was living in constant emotional pain. Um, But that did not... I mean, she was not weepy. She was... This is a woman who, until this event in her life, had had been a GP. Mm. Her her husband's a a cardiologist. Mm. Busy doctor-type people. Um, She was not weepy and emotional with us, but this was a woman obviously living under huge strain. That's right. And I think those who criticise her or her husband, have to just think for a moment how they would behave under an extraordinary onslaught from the media, not to mention the Portuguese police at the time. Um, And when they've lost the daughter, their treasured daughter, who had been... been, uh, Kate had given birth by IVF, uh, thinking that she wouldn't ever be able to bear children. Mm -hmm. I mean, How do we know really anyone would react? We all would react differently. Yes. You don't yeah. know. And additionally, if, you, if anyone looks at some of the pictures we print in the book, 
Kate McCann, in the first few days after this happened, was virtually catatonic with mm. grief. You cannot look at those pictures and say this is a cold woman. On the other hand, they were told the best advice, don't give an abductor anything to feed on. They have a perverse desire to see your pain. It contributes to their kicks. Be calm, be direct, talk to your daughter, talk to the perpetrator, but do it calmly. And, and I think that's, a, in the end, worked against them. But there's a kind of a level, and I hate to use the word misogyny in this idea, that there's a, a perfect view of what a mother is supposed to look like or how she's supposed mm. to grieve for her missing child. Mm. You know, Kate McCann's way is not necessarily my way or, you know, the lady from Cork's way, but mm. it doesn't mean her grief is less. Do you, th- do you think because there was such a huge, I mean, with the, within the space of hours, there was uh, international media descending, radio, television, newspapers, everything. Do you think that that helped or hindered in the sense that, like, I keep on com- coming back to the point when I've been dealing with this on the air, that Madeleine McCann became hot property, too hot to handle? I, th- I think this is a really important factor that you, you've hit on there. Um, the McCanns themselves thought, look, She's missing. What they they were hysterical, literally hysterical at first during the the searches during the night, but even that night when she disappeared, they the, there was they were saying, "What can we do about it? We don't think there are enough police here. What can we, underlined we do?" They were making calls to Sky News, trying to get through to Sky News. They, somebody in England, a friend, finally got through to to another TV station. And there was it was on the news on the TV, I think, before it was even news at all in in Portugal. Mm. And that's a phenomenon of this particular story. Um, they had a they thought we've got to get the news out there. We 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 have have got to do something. Um, Jerry had a sister in Scotland uh, who had students who were studying who had been studying computers, uh, and the word internet came up, and that's one of the key reasons that this thing mushroomed into such an enormous event, out of proportion, really. The, the, the Portuguese police were, by the way, not pleased. No, I was going to say, I was, that, that must have been a red rag to a bull then. Mm-hmm. Well, it was a red rag to the bull, especially because in Portugal, when uh, a case is at that stage, um, the, the not, one is not supposed to talk to the media, but they couldn't do anything about it because such an avalanche of of reporters and journalists uh, and television crews arrived and staked out, camped virtually outside the McCann's place for week after week after week uh, as the story developed. Mm, mm, mm. And then that didn't impress the Portuguese police and it was made even worse then when the Met got involved back in the UK and everything and they felt that people were saying that they weren't good cops, that they were Keystone cops or incapable. So there was a no love lost there. Added into the mix then, we found uh, phony charity collectors with the incident of a man breaking in, interfering with little girls. We had evidence throughout the eight-part doc, and I'm sure it's, it's extensively in your book, of apartments being watched by fellas. There was the pock-faced man, things like that. Um, there was the cadaver dogs. At, at one stage early in the, in the doc, we felt... Oh my God! Like this is uh, these are cadaver dogs who can smell bodies, and another dog who can smell blood. But that was inconclusive DNA, wasn't it? Extremely, and I think you know people do get very fascinated with the barking dogs, and, and a lot of uh, mud is thrown at the McCanns because of them. I would point out to people that in the following year, in another investigation, those dogs barked uh, to alert to the presence of a skull, which turned out to be a coconut shell. So these dogs are not as infallible as people would like them to believe. But there surely are cases where they have found bodies. There are indeed, but they are not infallible. And what the handler and what the evidence and what the handler said at the time was, you must wait for actual evidence to emerge. And no evidence of that type emerged in this case. The, The dogs can be a signal. And then you have to follow through and, and find out whether the evidence then takes you somewhere and yeah. stands up. The but alarm. forgive me, wasn't there DNA found in the boot of the hire car? The, there, there was, was DNA found in the hire car, and the, um, the the Portuguese police were initially misled by that and read it to mean that there was Madeline's DNA um, in the hire car or in, or in the apartment. To sum it up, in the end, the DNA uh, report by the Forensic Science Service showed to somebody we consulted, the recently retired um, forensic scientist for the government in, 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 in the Republic here, um, Dr Maureen Smythe, who said 
in summary, the DNA, quote, evidence, unquote, is a whole lot of nothing. Madeline's DNA was never found, nor was any blood ever found. You know, DNA... Was McCann DNA found? McCann? Well, no, they are not sure. Because okay. Madeline's DNA is a combination of her two parents' DNA, yeah. DNA shared by her brother and sister, and the science service said some of the DNA they found was a combination of the DNA of more than three people, some of whom could e as easily have been members of the science service's own staff. Okay, okay. A mess. Okay, okay. Anyway, who's going to, who, like, uh, what two parents? Think, think about this logically. Let's say they were involved in some way, and I'm not, I don't believe they were, incidentally. I don't. I don't think you could have two parents who could enter into some unbreakable pact of silence for all of these years. Somebody would crack. Um, but anyway, uh, who, who, would, who would hide a body for 25 days? How, how could you do that? I mean, where would you do that? Like, in, in, the, in the spotlight of everybody, the world media looking at you? You, yes, and you're speaking to the practical realities, and I think that's absolutely true. Your, your summation of, of what is suspected of the McCanns is so far-fetched that if people apply logic to it, they can see the holes in it themselves. And, and, and then you'd have to have a pact with all of those that were going out to dinner, wouldn't you? Indeed. To change the timeline or to... And indeed, pact with completely disinterested parties. The little nanny who came in to help in the search, who saw the open window. Members of the hotel staff who were waiting on the McCanns, who talked about the presence of where the parents were at given times. Their general behavior, the general demeanor of all of the guests. And added to that, one of the pieces of news that I wasn't aware of was that it was entered into the booking on a, on a, on a, at the beginning of the... They booked the same table for all of them. Was it eight or nine of them at eight o'clock in the evening? And it was entered into the booking, pick me up on this one, that the children, they wanted this time because the children were at home alone. Indeed. Do you think Kate, maybe Kate a staff... Saw, Kate saw this entry, entry in the book. Um, we have not seen it because it hasn't actually been published by the Portuguese police, but one has to take Kate's word for it on that, that the entry was there... That, they will be eating here because their children are, are being um, because they're watching their children the other side of the pool. Do you, do you think that just as quickly as someone working in a Spanish or Portuguese restaurant can skim your credit card details, that somebody could have seen this in the book and tipped off someone who was a predator? Is is that the implication that, that of is, this? That is a notion. The fact that this entry had been made in the book in the reservation book at the restaurant sent chills through through. Um, Kate McCann. And you can text 86 106 Anthony Summers and Robin Swan were part of Netflix's eight-part doc. They also wrote their own book on the subject called The Disappearance of Madeleine McCann. Still available, actually, incidentally. Still on sale? The bestseller? It's still going? We damn well hope so. Yeah, and probably... Actually a new edition of the book, which is, which is called Looking for Madeleine, is in the bookstores now. Okay, okay. Um, we're just chatting in the ad break there as to how Robert Murat was treated in all of this. Um, his life was turned upside down, inside out. He got a right bashing and was proved to be nothing more than um, a, a kind local citizen who wanted to help as a translator. He got absolutely savaged by the Red Tops, didn't he? Absolutely. He, um, so much so savage, that he ended up suing. Savage. He sued and in the end was um, harvested significant sums of money from the, the way in which he'd been treated by major newspapers in, in the United Kingdom. And cast aside then as cannon fodder, like. Mm. Yeah. Afterwards, yes. Um, I, every, his house was, his, they dr dug up his garden, um, turned over his house, put him in the public eye for, not for days, but for, for weeks. And he was, as you say, he was a man who was half Portuguese, half English, um, had a daughter of his own, was um, separated from his wife, who lived in the in the UK, but he was someone who could interpret, and he put himself forward to interpret uh, between the press mm -hmm. um, and the locals and so on. And as you say, he was a he seems to have been a well-meaning man who who talked too much. Um, he chatted on a bit, um, and that and there was Huntley in, comparisons at the time. Him, you got see, him, got him into the sort of hot water that will stay with him for life. Because you know, there will always be the people who whisper and say, that's, that's Robert Moran. Correct. Yeah. In spite of innocence, there will always be shadows. You know, there were so many, there were so many sightings. Um, there was uh, 
the Marrakesh petrol station. There was the Atlas Mountain sightings of the of the blonde girl. There was all of these private investigator firms that the McCanns brought in. They did more hindrance than good, actually, didn't they? There was one particular Irish investigator of America. He was nuts. Ab- absolutely. You know, when when Jerry and Kate McCann came back from Portugal after being named our Guidos in their daughter's disappearance. Suspect. Our Guido's a suspect. Yeah, yeah. They, they felt very lucky because a very generous benefactor appeared. Kennedy. Nice Brian guy. Kennedy. Yeah, came yeah. up with a load of money. And, and, he, and he believed them and he believed in their innocence and that was wonderful. But he was also rather naive, I think, in his um, distribution of money. And and chose some uh, some some investigators who weren't really up to the job. The first bunch were were actually very tenacious, very very good in some ways, but very amateurish. And then claims were made that Madeline would be home by Christmas, and of course that was absurd. I remember it, I remember it on the front page of the newspapers. Exactly, time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And and that was all the owner of the company sort of self-aggrandizing. So that then they moved on to another firm, and in the end that firm. Uh, uh, the, the president of that was revealed to be a, an absolute fraud man, a fraudster, a con man, who 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 took hundreds of thousands from the fine Madeline fund and produced absolutely nothing except some Google Earth images. Uh, then Anyone they went, could get. Yeah. yeah. Then they went on to a couple of other men who did a, a more decent job. Um, uh, and did produce a few relevant um, efits of, of of a man who had been seen carrying a small child, etc. Did anybody ever put up a million dollar ransom? Sorry, um, reward for information. Yes, leading. early early on. That bi- I mean, that a big ha- amount of money. Yes, very early on, you had J.K. Rowling and you had um, uh, Richard Branson and you had um, Philip Green, the, the the top shop man, all contributing to a great f- pool. Uh, for a reward, and one of the red tops actually was running that. We had the most extraordinary experience of almost the entire investigative process of this book in tracking down one of those leads about the reward. And it was that a man in Nigeria, attracted by the possibility of the reward, consulted seven witch doctors oh, for God's sake. to produce a psychic image of where Madeline was. He then fed this information, without revealing that witch doctors were his source, to the McCann's first investigators. This led to the staking out of a house in Lisbon. Uh, it led to high-speed chases, complete chaos, and, and resources being wasted, and all in pursuit of this million-dollar reward. You get no choice. Jobs, don't you? Total. What about the woman who stopped the man in Paris and said, have you brought my baby? Have you brought my child? Uh, it was, in, in fact, in um, the south of Spain, in, in Barcelona. I'm sorry, why did I think it was Paris? My apologies. Yeah, Barcelona. It was Bar- Barcelona on um, a festive night, and apparently um, a man remembered he had been out in, in, in the street, and um, a, a woman had stopped him and said, have you, ha- have you brought my new baby? And he's puzzled because he had no idea. And I think he'd had a few jars. Maybe she'd had a few jars. It was just a holiday encounter. And he kept it private for years because he had a wife back home. He'd been in Barcelona on his own. And he was concerned (laughs) that his wife would think that he'd been after the... An- another woman while he was in Barcelona. Then he did come up with it. But the lead went nowhere. And if you think about it, uh, is it really very likely that if someone had gone to the trouble of, of abducting, kidnapping uh, a little girl for a woman who couldn't have her own children, would you really arrange to meet on spec in the middle of a of a crowd um, on a on a crowded? So I think it was a quayside. Or Tony, I don't know. Maybe you would. Maybe well, maybe I, there's I, anonymity in numbers. So. I, we'll have a, I'll have a broken daffodil in my lapel and I'll be walking for... I it's mean, the no, stuff of I spy think, thrillers, I don't think, think so. Yeah, yeah. So what do you think happened to her? Well, the key thing, we've banded the word evidence around a bit this morning, um, and it's a word used loosely, but a key thing to understand is that there was, in the end, no evidence, no strands of hair that told a story, no fingerprints, no useful DNA. Um... What there was was a wealth of testimony and things that gradually emerged that at least helped one on the way to having a theory. There are three real possibilities, I suppose, based on what we know. One is the possibility, and we haven't mentioned this, that little Madeline, nearly four years old, I'm very grown up now, um, might have got up and, and wandered out on her own 
into the half-light. It was not quite dark. It was getting to be dark. And might have taken a wrong turn, thinking, I'll go and surprise Mummy and Daddy at dinner. There's, there's that thought. Cameras would pick that up. The, the, well, Virtually no, there no were CCTV. no cameras. There were no cameras. There are now. The OK, people. so she wandered out of the if apartment she, and was abducted? Out, well, wandered out, it could have been um, a chance abduction one in, in the world, in the realm of possibility. But the whole town was, at, the, at that point, um, riddled with trenches, deep trenches. We, we saw a similar one several years later in Prior de Luz. Did she fall into a trench in the dark? Did she fall into a, one of those large sewer pipes? I mean, that, that's a possibility. But consider they'd search that, those, Tony, wouldn't possi- they? I mean, consider they... that possibility one. Possibility two um, was that it, there might have been a burglary. There had, although no one had warned the occupants of that flat or any, any other flat, there had been a lot of burgle, burglaries in that resort in, in the months previous and, and just before, weeks previous. Um, was there a burglary that had gone wrong? Uh, uh, a burglar who had maybe tried to stop Madeline, maybe Madeline had stirred and woken and had made a noise and stopped and somehow she'd ended up being being killed? Well, there's, that becomes a second possibility. But if there's you no killed evidence. the child, you wouldn't take the child with you then, would you? You well, wouldn't who, think. Who, who knows? It's an, uh, an, an alarm, cr- critical information. Who knows? whether it was a burglary gone wrong. It's one of the possibilities that Scotland Yard pursued. The third possibility, and if you had to pin us down, then we would, we, we would probably um, lean that way, is that there was, in fact, an intrusion and an abductor and that it had been planned. Um, as you mentioned earlier, there is witness testimony that indicates quite strongly that the apartment was being watched can't go through all the the testimonies now, but there were three or four strong testimonies, the strongest of them all, that that very afternoon of the day on which she she disappeared, a woman in the upstairs apartment above the McCann's mm-hmm. apartment had been looking down and had seen a man appear to emerge. The, the kids and the parents were at the beach, seemed to emerge from the sliding doors that gave access to the apartment and go to the little gate that led to the street mm-hmm. and seemed to test it. And, and, and he, he looked, in her words, furtive, uh, surreptitious, as though he was trying to see whether one could open the gate quietly. And so whether on. it squeaked. It, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. It, he looked like a man who was checking that. Um, so there was this quite impressive witness testimony that suggests the place was being watched. There had been visits to that apartment and others in the area in the in the previous days. One of them just the week before at the McCann's apartment of charity collectors coming round saying they were collecting for an orphanage at a certain place not far away. We checked. We really checked. There was no such orphanage. So on its face, those people and sometimes it was one man, sometimes it was two men. Um, were committing some sort of a crime, even if it was it was fraud to get get some money for the imaginary. Mm. And that happens. Or, there are bogus collectors yes. everywhere. I'm sure that you have them in Waterford. We have them in Cork. But, yes, and the but but also, um, and this nobody knew at the time. Um, there had been a, a history of intrusions to apartments, particularly apartments owned or rented by by British parents with children and in, intrusions into apartments, 28 apartments, within 40 miles of Prior de Luz over the preceding months. Sometimes and, with the collusion of staff, I have to say, working within those complexes, you know, inside information as to what possible, apartments will... Yeah, possible, uh, uh, possible. Uh, uh, and this uh, is one of the things when they um, check the telephone calls made in the area, the, uh, the mobile phone calls made in the area that Scotland Yard pursued and eventually interviewed three men who were temporarily um, identified as formal suspects. Um, but so, the, so with no. with with Mad- did you want to say something? I did. I, th- I think you know if we. I think I know people are distressed by the McCanns leaving their children al- uh, alone and doing this checking. Yeah, and system. again, more of it since you yeah. came on air. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I would say, the thing that made us angry, having learned of these twenty-eight cases in which British children 
were attacked in their beds or at least men intruding into their homes. Kate McCann learned of these the day after her daughter was taken. I know. There was no Fine warning. Sorry. No, no. There was no posting on the yeah. British consular website. There was no warning from the from the holiday making holiday companies. Nothing Robin, like that. You, do, you don't leave your valuables in an apartment, so you hardly leave your children when you're not there. Like that. It's, you are war- You you do deserve a warning if serious crime is taking place. I, I concur with you. The McCanns made a mistake in judgment. Like you wouldn't leave your passport up on the bed and go to dinner. Like how would you leave? Well, some people do. Oh, I no. don't. Um, Listen, can I just nail this one? Because I've been hearing do. this a lot recently. Sure. The, there are claims that the McCanns went playing tennis the morning after Madeline. Did you hear that? No. Well, no. Is that just something no. that's no. happening on Lee side? That's just the, somebody, somebody picking up on, on a lot of the vile. They played stuff. tennis a good deal, and they played tennis the previous day. Yeah, uh, not not because uh, fact, one of the last people to say to me was was people at home must have got it on fake news or something. And yes. I was saying, do you really think the parents who are frantically searching for their missing daughter would play a game of tennis? W- w- even if you were the terrible villain that some people think they are, would they would they be that stupid as to do it in front of the world's press? They were never charged with neglect, though, either in Portugal or the London. Portuguese prosecutor looked at the case and in his final filing said they had a reasonable expectation that their children would be safe under the system that they had employed to monitor them and that they had suffered enough, that there was no ground okay. to, pub- to prosecute them for negligence. And the Portuguese, believe me, would have loved to have prosecuted somebody for something at that point. But that top cop, Morello Amarillo? Amaral. A- Amaral. Amaral. Does he still believe the McCanns were guilty? Of he's killing seen, their children, of their seems child. To. He yeah. seems to. And um, like, do you think that he's completely irrational in that belief? Or does he think I that? Th- I think that he he is a man who has been in all sorts of trouble. And we must be careful talking about it on air, not least in a previous case um, in which the police had be- behaved badly, involving a, a missing child. And he was an Arguido at one stage himself. Uh, well, he was. Um, yes, he was pursued legally for um, o- over what he had done in, in the previous case. I, as I say, I must be careful about what I say mm-hmm. because people have been suing each other backwards and forwards. Yeah, 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 but, one of those stories. But um, the British police and the Portuguese police, in the Portuguese police under new leadership, have both said absolutely categorically that there is no evidence or or reason to think that the McCanns at any stage did anything wrong. Well, ex- well we know what they did wrong. Except but for, the, except yeah. for the, the, the mistake. But in, in, in terms of leaving their child there, remember each of the other parents had left their children um, to be minded every 20 minutes or so. Well, maybe they had a sense of entitlement or something, uh, maybe I, middle I class or upper so. middle they class entitlement. They th- look, they were the other side of the hotel swimming pool they could make out the building, but more than make it out, it was 60 yards from where they were sitting at their dinner table to where their children were, and they could see the building. It, it how, is, how, does that, how is that relevant? Like, they're, they're being checked every 30 minutes. They're behind concrete. They might as well have been 600 yards. Neil, you're, 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 you're making a, a very good point. The idea that one of the children could have choked or gotten sick or any of those things... All, all possibly true. They didn't think of it. Upper middle class people aren't as entitled or as, you know, prone to making mistakes as the rest of us. They are only humans. They made a mistake. They themselves admit they made a mistake, okay. and they will live with that mistake. Yeah, it's just, just yes. I'm just referencing lots of texts here. Completely um, sympathetic to people's anger. They, about as, as doctors, they more than anyone knew the dangers of leaving children on their own. Um, that's just one of them. There. Let, can I, can I just look then as to this is still an active investigation in the UK and in Portugal? Um, all these years later, Madeleine McCann now would be. Correct me, 15, 16 years old? She'd be almost 16. Okay, and they, of course, have aged her photograph to show what we all believe she looks like now. Or we're all agreed on that. And she'd be pe- peculiarly recognisable for one reason. People haven't mentioned it for years, but at the beginning it was mentioned a lot. She had a coloboma, that's a kind of a blemish, in her, her right eye. eye. Yeah. And you, if you look look at pictures of her, you can just make it out. And certainly if you looked straight into the eyes of the 
the girl concerned when she was a little girl, and it would still be there. Now. Very evident. It was a, a very visible blemish in her right eye, which makes it um, perhaps more likely than that that she will be identified. And, and a key thing, if we're getting near the, the end of this conversation here, let me give you a, a couple of statistics. The only place that there are decent statistics on disappearing children is in, happens to be in the United States. In the United, in the United States, um, there they reckon that 40% um, of children who have disappeared do indeed wind up either dead, killed, or, or one way or the other deceased. But 56% are found eventually, emerged in, e eventually. And so the, one should not give up hope. The McCanns... And the 4% in the yeah. middle, those misfortunes, are never found. Are never, never found. found. Okay. No evidence about but them. there were 1,300 ba children abducted in Portugal, um, and this one got all of the headlines. I don't know how many of the other 1,300 out of Portugal with the African continent close enough were ever recovered. Do, do, do you not think that sh she was just too hot to handle and actually probably didn't even survive more than a number of hours? I, I think it days of lucky. I think it depends. I, it really depends on the circumstances in which she was taken just and why. Just twist that into yourself. I'm there. sorry. I think Is it depends you... on the circumstances for which she was taken and why. There are all sorts of tragic projections we could make about trafficking or about... You know, the best case, the thing that any parent would want to think is she was taken by somebody who wanted a child to love. Well, if that had been me, I would have had her hair cut, her hair colored, uh, some fake tan on her and dressed her as a boy within, t you know, 15 seconds. But the eye is going to give it away. The eye apparently is not that noticeable when she's in motion. If it you're shows looking up for in a photograph. But sure, like somebody stands next to her in a school or something or a teacher sees it, like, are you going to keep her in a dungeon? Very, very possibly. It, it is difficult to know. It is difficult to know. As I said, believe it or not, when you say Madeleine McCann in the United States, and given my accent, I get to do that, people say, oh, who's that? We find that hard to believe, but there are places she could be hidden. Do you believe that there's a chance, or, or do you strenuously believe that she's alive? I wouldn't say I strenuously believe it, but I say I, I do believe there is a chance, uh, yeah, and one the, has seen it. Yeah. People emerge, are discovered... Give them, come, come into the police or, or one way or the other are found as many as 20 years later. The likelihood that they'll be found alive diminishes with the passing of time. That's entirely true. But the McCanns have not given up hope and the, um, the, the creme de la creme of child protection officers in, in the world say flatly, never give up hope. Anything is always possible. But highly unlikely though, Tony. Wait, no, no. It, it, many. I mean, it would be the most amazing day in the history of, course, of the world. Of course it would, would it not be? But if 56%, I mean, there was a child found in, I think it was in 2015 or 16, a child who'd been missing had been snatched at birth. But not of this profile. Was, is my, was, I know that. I accept yeah, the stats. Yeah. But I'm talking about this is prolific. It's in a different level, league. Uh, of course it is. Of course it is. We, you know, we don't, we don't live in fantasy land. And, and we accept that there, there, you know, there, there is... A, a great p probability that she could be dead, but as long as we do not know what happened to Madeline, there are other children who are potentially at risk if she was abducted. We know that there were these 28 cases in which someone who has never been identified was entering the homes of children in the Arg Algarve attempting to sexually assault them. So, mm. so there are are lots of good policing reasons to find out who perpetrated this particular crime. So th there are a whole bunch of good reasons to continue to pursue this case to the end. And Jim Gamble, who used to head the Child Exploitation and Online Protection Center in the UK and still works in the field, uh, based in Belfast, says that he firmly believes that in his lifetime we'll know what happened to what Madeline. What do the Portuguese think of all of this? Uh, that thinking, well, the Portuguese uh, are themselves uh, pursu pursuing the case. No, the Portuguese it? people. I know that it's still an active investigation, but how do they view all of this in the sense that it was a British child uh, as opposed to the 1,300 of their own that probably just didn't get that much attention? They also must find it bizarre that we, uh, you know, British and Irish people, um, we don't 
like the, 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 the Spanish and the Portuguese they, and the Italians, they take their children everywhere. They take them to dinner. They, you know, they, they probably found that strange as well, did they? That's entirely true. And there were was an outcry about the McCanns having left their children in in the way that they did the other side of the swimming pool. Um, but I think the public mood has changed. It, in locally in Praia de Luz, there was huge outpouring of help at the beginning, and then by by the time this had gone on for years and they perceived it, there was a perception that the local people had lost business because nobody was going to Praia de Luz or That's fewer right. people yeah. were going they to Praia They were putting signs up and everything. There was resentment. Um, now it seems to have mellowed, and indeed since the documentary um, that, that started on Netflix uh, a week or two ago, um, there have been letters from the public, st stuff on the internet from the public in Portugal saying... Now that we see the evidence laid out, because that's the main thing that, as we try to do in our book, yes, yeah, um, that yeah. Netflix have tried to do, which is to lay out, lay it out end to end. This is what we have, and the Portuguese, um, some of the Portuguese um, t texts and things on the internet have s suggested that well. Now, now that we see it laid out, we don't think they're so more objective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, there is, is one one imp important thing that that w we should cover, which is that there is, as you say, there's still a police investi ongoing police investigation in the UK. There's an ongoing police investigation, much shrunken in size, in, in Portugal as well. Um, but, the, of course, the investigations need funding. 11 million and counting has been spent on the, the investigation uh, by Scotland Yard. In recent months... And the recent year, last year or so, they have been given what I call taxi money, not just serious money. Yeah. One hundred and fifty thousand to keep the investigation going, that sort of thing, for six months, which runs out any day now. They have asked for not another six months worth. They've asked for another year's worth, so, which surprises me. A year's worth of money, which suggests, in a way, on its own that the people involved at Scotland Yard think that feel that they're onto something. They're onto and something, they're making ground. Okay. There is a suggestion from a source that I can't talk about, but but I tend to believe that they are in fact looking for a suspect, a female suspect, um, in Eastern Europe um, in connection with this. Um, I That's interesting. That sounds like well, it breaking news. It, it, it may may be correct. They may be on. That's a lead they're following. They may okay. be on to okay. a serious and genuine lead, or not. But the, the 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 big story of finding her, or finding out what happened to her that you've mentioned, could yet happen. Okay, okay. I'm going to love you and leave you, but before I do, the McCanns didn't take part in the Netflix eight talk eight part doc. It seemed to me very sympathetic to them when all of the facts were laid out, right? They also got an opportunity to see it afterwards, and they refused. They dropped the ball on this, like, there was a missed opportunity for them to get involved, and then, as you say, crack the world and crack America. They didn't do it. Well, I think the McCann's concern, and when we tried to interview them for our book, their concern then was that anyone do anything that crosses with the police investigation. They know that they're, that they made a mistake by leaving their daughter alone. I know that, and but I'm talking about guilty. this. But I think they also recognize that anything they touch, if they become involved, then people will say, oh, they're just doing that because the, McCann, the McCanns are cooperating. So you can't, they can't really win. If they participate, people will say, oh, it's skewed in their favor. If they don't participate, then they worry, oh, it's going to hinder the investigation. So Damned if you do. Damned, damned if, if you, you do, don't. damned if you don't. And I think both jur and journalists have the same problem. Everyone wants to interview the McCanns, and yet you also want to be able to operate independently of the McCanns. Mm. So we all have that problem, and, and I think that that's what they were facing when they, when they made the nice decision. Nice text there just to wrap for you. I'm so glad those investigative journalists are on your program this morning speaking on behalf of the McCanns and on the McCarse McCann story to speak in favour of the McCanns. I can't believe how cruel people are. I never thought Kate looked cold. Um, I find her hard to watch on TV because I think her grief is palpable. That's just a paragraph from a much lengthier text. Thank you both. I kind uh, of them to say, but we do not speak on behalf of anybody we except ourselves. No, but I think that you have been very, you've laid it out very fairly. Uh, you're not talking, did she say you were talking on behalf of the McCanns? You know, in favour of, I think. Okay. Uh, yeah. right. Okay. Anyway, listen, good to see you. Who knows, we may talk again.
and the latest instalment in this Madeleine McCann story. But for now, I would recommend it. I'm going to read it. My apologies. I haven't read the book. I usually do beforehand. I just didn't get a chance because okay. I got you at short notice. But I will be looking uh, and buying and reading Anthony Summers and Robin Swan's book, Looking for Madeleine. Thank you for travelling up this morning. Thank you, Neil. Thank you. Cheers. Back after 11. The Neil Prenderville Show. With Tesco, where you won't pay more for the products that matter most to you.